Hi, I'm Zia Scaravalla from ZK Research, and I'm here inside the Chase Center, home of the World Championship Golden State Warriors. A little while ago, the Chase Center actually announced that they wanted to be the first arena or stadium, the public venue, to use Wi-Fi 6E, upgrading from Wi-Fi 6. So we're going to have a walk around the stadium, understand why that's so important to them, the different type of experiences that they can have, and enjoy uh, the game later. So uh, let's go on the tour now. All right, well, I'm inside uh, the Chase Center now in one of the suites with Daniel Brusilovsky, who's the VP of IT for the Warriors and the Chase Center, which is all kind of the same thing. And in my uh, intro, I had talked about how uh, it was your stated goal to be the first venue to have Wi-Fi 60. Why was that so important to you? So, uh, first of all, thanks for coming. It's great yeah. to have you at Chase Center. Um, for us as an organization, we're obsessed with creating the best fan experience possible. And so, uh, about a year and a half ago, when we had that first initial conversation with the Aruba team about 6E and the potential of 6 gigahertz, we were so excited about what that could bring to an environment like Chase Center. So for us, that's, uh, that was really the exciting part is, let's be first in creating something that was really unique and special for our fans, um, utilizing this new six gigahertz spectrum and the, the potential of what 6E brings to not only our fans, but also in an environment like this where we're obsessed with our fans and creating the best experience possible, and also creating more immersive experiences and enabling our fans to do what they want at the speed that they want and having the, the appropriate bandwidth there to support, uh, to support all of it. I, I think when you go to public venues now or sporting facilities, you see everybody on their phone. Yeah. Right? And, and how important is the mobile device, do you think, to the fan experience and, and how are you trying to integrate that in? Oh, it's absolutely critical. Um, when we reopen safely coming out of COVID, one of the biggest uh, changes that happened to our business was that we moved to 100% digital tickets. Yeah. And that all happens through the Warriors plus Chase Center app. So when you're thinking about connectivity, it's the lifeblood of how we connect with our fans. Um, when Joe Lacob and Peter Guber set out the vision for Chase Center, they said it needed to be a connected experience. And you can't have a connected experience without connectivity. Yeah. And so that's where we've really partnered really closely with HP and Aruba on creating that infrastructure to enable the things that we wanna do today, but most importantly, the things that we wanna do in the future. And so it starts with our app through ticketing, through food and beverage ordering, through wayfinding. We have over 800 uh, Meridian beacons in the venue that help with that blue dot yeah. indoor uh, navigation. We have virtual beacons through the Aruba APs as well. All of that is part of creating that connected experience that really starts with our mobile app, but really with all of our fans' mobile devices. And for a, a stadium this size, how many access points are in here? Yeah, so we have over 800 access points that have full coverage. So okay. we own and operate this entire uh, area, which is inclusive of Chase Center, which is the building we're obviously in, but also Thrive City which is a, a three acre plaza that's in, in front of the, the, the Chase Center with the largest outdoor video board in San Francisco. We have retail, we have a place where you can gather 365 days a year. And so part of that vision of creating a connected experience was providing connectivity across all 11 acres that we own and operate. And so we have access points in the building, outdoors, in our parking garages. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make sure connectivity was everywhere. So the minute someone stepped foot or drove uh, into our parking garage, they had a fully connected experience. And from conversations I've had with other uh, sports CIOs, it seems the big driver here is, is video, right? Everyone's doing video and social media all the time. Yeah. 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 It's been huge. I mean, you hopefully tonight will see at the game, people are capturing these moments in real time. When Steph is going off and he's making mm -hmm. those threes, you want to capture that moment and share it on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Snap and all these different platforms. You want to share it to your friends and family who can't be here and are missing that moment. So for us, again, we want to provide an incredible experience for our fans, um, but we also want to provide an immersive experience. Tonight, you'll see a really cool feature called the HPE Fan Cam, mm -hmm. where uh, people will be able to provide their point of view during the game and see it on the scoreboard. We have the largest uh, scoreboard for an indoor venue in North America. So to be able to show a fan's perspective um, through your mobile device is yet another uh, really cool way that we're helping our fans engage with the actual game as well. Yeah, I've been to a lot of venues. I gotta tell you, your scoreboard inside is bigger than a lot of the ones outside. Yeah, and we'll see it in a few <laughs> yeah. minutes when we head out there. Yeah. You'll see just um, how big it is and, and the potential we have to create really immersive experiences. So for those not familiar with 6E, yeah. uh, it uses the six gigahertz spectrum, right? And that to some people might just be alphabet soup or goggle <laughs> But what does that actually do for the person using the mobile device. Yeah, the easiest way to explain it is more bandwidth. 
So um, as you know, there's and really- less crowded bandwidth. E exactly. Yeah. So the way I've kind of been explaining it in layman's terms is there's 2.4 gigahertz and there's five gigahertz. I view 2.4 as kind of a one lane highway. Five gigahertz is maybe a two lane highway. Six gigahertz is like a five lane highway way more uh, ability for traffic to flow through, which for us, especially in, a, in an environment like Chase Center, which is you have 18,000 people in the Arena Bowl, you want to provide as much connectivity and as much bandwidth with as lower latency as possible. And 6E is perfect for that because it allows for that much more data throughput and bandwidth in an environment like uh, a setting like the Chase Center uh, Arena Bowl. And we just ran some tests here. Yeah. And I'll, I'll show that video uh, on screen here. Uh, and so for a five gigahertz device with the old uh, with six uh, with Wi-Fi six yeah uh, what kind of speeds were we getting yeah we were getting about 170 180 up down which uh, is actually pretty good which is great yeah. in an environment like this again remember in the seating bowl yeah. um, really dense uh, a lot of signal interference um, speeds like that are great what we're seeing now on 6e is sometimes over a gig of upload speed um, anywhere between over six seven uh, down over a gig up um, pretty remarkable speeds to be getting entirely over Wi-Fi. Well, as a fan, I'm glad you're making this investment because I can't tell you how many venues I've been to where you take a great picture and you want to share it with all your friends to stick it in their face that you're at the game and they're not, <laughs> but then you can't. Yeah. Right? And then you got to wait till later. So uh, anyway, so I know you got a lot of cool technology yeah. to put out there. Uh, do you mind if we take a walk out there and have yeah. a look around? Let's do it. Okay, let's go. Okay. All right, Daniel, well, we're in the bowl now, yep. and I noticed that uh, there's an access point here. Yes. And uh, it's uh, it doesn't really look like an access point, it's just yeah. a box. Yeah, and that's partly on purpose. So when we were designing Chase Center, one of the really important design aspects is where are we actually going to put the APs? And there's a lot of conversation about overhead, under seat, do we put them in railings? And uh, we ultimately decided in very close collaboration with Aruba, that under seat made the most sense. And so- and why we, does that make the most sense? Because we want the devices as close to the APs as possible. And so if you're doing overhead, you're obviously creating um, a lot more potential for interference and, and service degradation. And so we felt that this was a really good way of being able to connect uh, devices as close to the source as possible. Um, so we have over 250 um, Wi-Fi 6E APs, which are the Aruba 635, that are in the seating bowl. In the bowl itself. In the bowl. So 250 plus APs uh, in the bowl, and they're all under seat. So uh, we have one uh, AP per 75 devices. Okay. So there's really great coverage across the entire seating bowl. So I'm going to bring 10 devices and mess that ratio. Bring them on. We want them all connected. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and what are some of the other challenges of doing it in a in a bowl like this? Because you get a lot of interference. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, there's obviously concrete is a big thing. Yeah. So concrete. Yeah. Wi-Fi doesn't like concrete. No, Wi-Fi yeah. does not uh, like concrete. So. Uh, obviously, yeah, a lot of potential for interference. Um, some of our seats are retractable because we also have concerts and other events. Right. And so making sure that everything is set up properly for every single event where all the APs are plugged in to all the fiber running around the building um, is also something that was a big part of the design process as well. Okay. And then I noticed the scoreboard up there. Yes. Uh, you know, it's uh, you mentioned that's the largest indoor one. Yes. And uh, all that data I noticed during the game, yeah, it's like lightning fast analytics that come up on the screen. Yeah, you'll notice tonight during the game, we have one of the most advanced uh, stats packages in the NBA. So we have a ton of room, as you can see, to display stats. Uh, both inside and outside. Both inside. Yeah. So you can see we have the underbelly board, yeah. but we also have the actual scoreboard. And then we have corner boards and an immense amount of LEDs as well all with the goal of showing as much data and information as possible to really enhance that fan experience. Yeah, I've talked to, uh, in my conversations with other sports venues, they, they talk about how uh, the TV experience in a lot of ways is better mm. than in stadium because you've actually got a lot of that data. Yeah. So now you can actually bring all the benefits of being at home into the stadium itself exactly. and create that really enhanced experience. And if you're sitting in this seat, you've got a pretty good view of the action you, as well. You do, yeah. yeah. So. All right, well, where do you want to go next? Next, we're going to go to the data center where this all uh, gets back to and where the magic happens. All right, looking forward to that. All right. Okay, Dan, well, we're in your data center now. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty impressive. We've got a lot of stuff going on here, right? Uh, I see some Aruba uh, kit in here. What are we looking yeah. at here? So this is really where all the magic happens. So 
um, our entire network infrastructure is built on Aruba. And it really starts with um, the 8320. So wired uh, and wireless. Wired, wired and, and wireless. Outdoor as well. Yeah, yeah, everything. Everything runs on Aruba here. So we've got, obviously, the core routers and switches. Um, we have our airwave network controller. Uh, we're using ClearPass. That's um, the NAC, right? Yep, yeah, exactly. Our, our mobility conductor. We've got our firewalls. But essentially, this is the heartbeat of the entire network at Chase Center. What's really unique about our setup here is that we have a fully redundant uh, version of this on the other side of the arena. Oh. So if anything ever happened to any of these uh, applications... Um, so can uh, I turn it off, see what happens? I would not do that if <laughs> I were you, but in, the in theory, and we have tested it, uh, if any of these uh, go down, it fails over to an entirely redundant version uh, of everything that is in this uh, rack. So when we... You know, from an analyst perspective, we always think a large enterprise, I mean 5,000, 10,000 users. At peak capacity, how many users are you supporting here? So this is what's really interesting, is that without an event happening here, we still have thousands of devices that are connected to our network. And that's because we have so many IoT devices, oh. our badge sensors, our security cameras, our point of sale systems. You might have more IoT than OT, or OT devices than IT. Right? Yeah, potentially, yeah, yeah. 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 So we have so many devices that connect to our network, even with no fans here. So then you add 18,000 fans and employees and staff and everything, we can have you know, 25,000 plus devices on the network. Um, a few weeks ago, just to give you some really interesting um, data, a few weeks ago we hosted the League of Legends Worlds. Um, oh yes, that's right. At Chase Center, yeah. we did over five terabytes of, uh, of bandwidth just on Wi-Fi uh, with a take rate of over 72%. Yeah, which and that's an environment, if it doesn't work, you're going to hear about it. Right oh, yeah, there. especially yeah. with that audience yeah. and, and, and that type of event. So we were absolutely thrilled that our network infrastructure here, that we had full confidence in everything that you see in this rack, that everything worked fully as expected and then some to be able to handle five terabytes over wireless. So give my audience a sense of uh, bandwidth here that during the game, yeah. uh, what's the, the typical bandwidth that one might see? Yeah, so are you talking about in terms of speeds that yes. they'll get? Well, total total data throughput. Yeah, so yeah. for a normal Warriors game, we'll do probably about a, a terabyte and a half of data. Okay. Um, so that really puts the League that's, of Legends lot, world yeah. Yeah. in perspective uh, of over five terabytes. During the finals, um, we'll, we did over four terabytes, uh, or close to four terabytes. We hosted the NCAA um, March Madness West Regional Finals. We did uh, about a little over four terabytes for that event. Um, so, and, and the best part about all of that is that we feel like we're just scratching the surface of what's possible with this network infrastructure. And what about concerts? I know uh, it's funny because we all think sports drives a lot of bandwidth, but from the data that I've seen, nothing yeah. drives bandwidth like a Taylor Swift concert or something yeah, like that. Yeah, exactly. For us, our biggest show has been Metallica. Metallica. So we've been very fortunate that Metallica opened Chase Center and they've come back for, um, for two more shows since then. And Metallica has been the number one event in terms of bandwidth. Uh, with about three and a half terabytes okay. uh, of bandwidth so, for those shows. So if you can do that for concerts, you can do it for uh, the other events. If I'm in a game here, I think uh, most fans should be pretty certain that whatever it is they want to do, they're going to be able to do. We feel really confident that with our network infrastructure and especially with the new uh, Wi-Fi 6E access points, fans are going to have no issue connecting uh, and doing whatever they want to do on their mobile devices. All right. Okay, Daniel, well, thanks. That brings us to the uh, the end of our tour. I just want to do a little rapid fire yeah. fun things here. So, uh, who's your favorite player? Well... You're going to say Curry, right? Yeah, obviously it's yeah. Steph Curry, <laughs> the, uh, the face of the franchise. Yeah. Hard not to pick uh, number 30. Most memorable moment in this arena? Oh, uh, opening night with Metallica. Um, years of, of uh, hard work culminating in uh, an incredible concert. Um, very close second is... Uh, is when we won the championship, uh, when we had a watch party here. We had uh, oh, yeah. 15,000 people or so here watching on the scoreboard that we just saw, uh, watching the game from Boston and, and celebrating with uh, a building full of Warriors fans. There's nothing like it. Now you know that's my hometown, so you're, you're hitting me where it hurts there. Yeah, so. yeah, this is all on purpose, don't <laughs> worry. Okay. And uh, how about prediction for this year? Are they gonna go back to back? I have to, I have to <laughs> go with my gut and say, yeah, they're going to go back to back. Yeah, well, they're, uh, they're a good team. They're usually back end loaded uh, in the season, so I can see that happening. But I can tell you some Celtics will have something to say about that. So <laughs> maybe they'll see you in the finals again this year. It would be a good finals yeah. rematch. All right, on behalf of Daniel Brusilovsky from uh, the Chase Center, I'm ZS Caraval from ZK Research. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.